Warning, this video contains small spoilers for the beginning of Yakuza 0. If you have not played Yakuza 0 yet and plan to play it and want no spoilers at all, go play it. It's an amazing game worth every penny. Then come back and watch this video. Hello everyone, my name is Axie Orlin and today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite bike wielding maniac in Disco Simulator 1989. Wait a minute. Today we're going to talk about Yakuza 0. Now you may be wondering, who are you and why am I watching this video? You may also be wondering, what is Yakuza 0? Honestly, I don't even know anymore. Yakuza 0 is an open world action RPG beat em up dating sim about, you guessed it, karaoke the Yakuza. Yakuza? I don't know. Now I did replay the game on the hardest difficulty Legend, so I could both refresh my memory on the game and try said hardest difficulty, since I hadn't played on it before, and maybe because I'm a bit of a masochist. So you'll be seeing some footage from my playthrough while I blabber on about the game over it and show you things from the game I might be talking about, if I remember to record those parts. I'm also going to be skimming over the story, as we'd be here all day if I explained all of it. And with that out of the way, let's get into Yakuza 0. Right off the bat, we see our main protagonist, Kazuma Kiryu, aka Bike Wielding Maniac, aka as he's beating the absolute shit out of generic Japanese businessman. Oh no! Kiku takes all the money in his wallet and dips, makes some horny dudes on the street shit their pants, Oh no! and meets up with a loan shark, aptly named Loan Shark. He pays Kiryu for a job well done. After some chit chat, he offers Kiryu an orgy. Wait, no, it was just a job. But Kiryu promptly turns him down, and calls him an asshole. And then a bangin' tune starts playing, as one of the most hype intros I've ever seen plays as well. Showing off the world of Yakuza. And so starts chapter 1. That took me 2 hours and 5 minutes to finish, with most of it being cutscenes, but I digress. We're then thrown right into the game after a small bit of dialogue from Kiryu first, and told to find Nishiyama, a character we'll be introduced to soon. After walking down the street, we run into a group of street hooligans that are shaking someone down, which starts the first tutorial and the first of many ass kickings you will dish out throughout the game. I'll be explaining the game with an Xbox controller in mind since that's what I use to play the game even though I'm on PC, and since I've never owned a PlayStation, I couldn't tell you the button layout if I wanted to. The combat starts off pretty simple. X for light attack, press it multiple times for a short combo, Y for heavy attack, which can be worked into the light attack combo, B to grab enemies and weapons around the area, and finally A to dodge, a button which will be very useful on the highest difficulty. After finishing the fight, we're introduced to Akira Nishikiyama. Along with being Kiryu's best friend, he's also a fairly important character throughout most of the story. He makes fun of you for always getting into fights, calls you up tight, and then invites you out to a full night of drinking. After a bit more dialogue, he used to it, there's gonna be a lot of it, about a couple of unimportant things, and a man named Kazuma who is currently in prison, which Nishiki describes as number two in the whole Dojima operation, which we'll learn more of later. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention the different families. The only two worth mentioning at the moment are the Kazuma family, which obviously Kazuma heads, and the Dojima family, which is the head honcho of the Yakuza, and the family that Kiryu and Nishiki are also in. Now we're finally able to move around a bit more than before. So as any sane person would do, I go...
Damn, Kiryu, I thought you'd be able to run a little longer than that. After waiting for Nishiki to catch up, then promptly leaving it behind again, he mastered the art of teleportation and was somehow ahead of me. And we run into a couple of arguing drunks on our way, which leads to the second tutorial. Yay! It just tells us how to use heat moves. Essentially press Y when you're an enemy, when your heat gauge has one, two, or three bars full, and you'll do an animation attack for a good amount of damage. I beat the shit out of them, got told about completion points, and moved on. Kiryu is then stopped by a man by the name of Bacchus. We're not supposed to know that yet, but it's easier to refer to him that way. He blabs on for a while, then tells Kiryu how to level up by investing in himself with tons of money to unlock things like stat increases and new combos and heat moves. And yes, money is pretty much XP in this game. I leave Nishiki behind again. Nishiki's hosts show up, he gives them some money, and they leave. Is it just me or does this cutscene feel really pointless? We move on to another cutscene in the bar we've been trying to get to this whole time, and we see Kiryu and Nishiki talking about Cosmo once again, how he raised them in an orphanage, and that they joined the Yakuza to follow in his footsteps. Then Nishiki wants to sing some karaoke. Maybe I was right about the karaoke thing. Nice. Kiryu gets complimented on his singing, then gets his balls busted, and Nishiki gets hungry, so they go to get food. But not before leaving behind again. Nishiki was an ass and buys Kiryu, who wasn't hungry, an extra large of whatever's in those bowls. They notice on the news there's been a. in Kamurocho. Kiryu shrugs it off until he sees the businessman he shook down earlier. You seem pretty sure you didn't kill him, Kiryu, but you did kick his entire fucking face in. Kiryu then gets a page from HQ. Nishiki says that anyone looking to Kazuma's position will try to use this as a way to bring him down since he brought Kiryu into the family. The three Dojima lieutenants being the first to come to mind. Nishiki also suspects that one of them even ratted out Kazuma's gambling hall that got found even though it never stayed in one place. Kiryu then goes outside to find a payphone to call HQ, and it's suddenly day. How much time passed while they were drinking and eating? Didn't seem like much time at all, but alright. I got to play for six seconds before being thrust into more dialogue? Jesus Christ, I don't remember this many cutscenes. I wanna kill people, Dip. No, no. Kiryu has never killed a man in his life. Kiryu calls out the HQ, gets told the lieutenants are waiting for him, and is on his merry way. I get to run around for maybe another 15 seconds before getting into a taxi and heading off into... A 10 minute cutscene that I briefly considered skipping because I was so bored, but I didn't, just so I would have the footage to use in case I needed it, but I'm just going to give you a rundown of what happens anyways, so I probably didn't need to suffer through this in the end, but whatever, here goes. Kiyu goes inside and we get introduced to the three lieutenants, Inky, Blinky, and Clyde. Kiyu suspects the loan shark set him up, they don't believe him and want him to go to prison, they think Cosmo made him do it, Inky gets very angry and loudly kicks the table. We get told the guy was killed with a shooty bang bang that Kiryu doesn't own. Clyde acts like a cunt. They keep asking Kiryu why he did it in that alley. Kiryu is confused and so the lone shark told him to do it there. Clyde turns weirdly and transition to normal cutscene from in-game dialogue. I know what you're all thinking about these cutscenes. Kuze has Shibusawa and Awano leave the room. He gets high. Kiryu is lost. Kuze tells Kiryu about the empty lot he did the collection in and its importance. Pretty much the lot has been hard to get, and the person who gets it to Dojima first, for some huge redevelopment project he wants to do, gets second command, and becomes the head of the Dojima family when the man himself steps down, aka Kazuma's place. And now it's harder to get because, well, take a guess. Kuze tells Kiryu is pretty much fucked and to leave his little finger behind as a goodbye before going to prison. But I'm not done yet! Kiryu heads back to Kamurocho, where he runs into Bacchus again, who has a friend with him this time. After more pain and suffering in the form of text, he asks Kiryu for some help with debt collectors that are after him. Kiryu gladly accepts. Bacchus tells the debt collector he'll double the amount he owes if we can beat up Bruno, the debt collector's muscle, and agrees to it. With Bacchus' friend, Kamoji, going first. He pulls some sick fighting moves that makes Kiryu magically learn them instantly. And so commences the rushed out tutorial slash Bruno fight. That just teaches us it's a faster yet weaker moveset, yada yada, let's move on. At least I'm not watching a movie made of cutscenes anymore. Kiryu gets the location of the loan shark from the collectors since they work for him. After they leave, Bacchus tells us his name, which we already know. 
Kiryu asks about Komoji, and Bak is exposed as Komoji's fisting fetish. Komoji then teleports behind him to correct him. Nothing else of note happens here, so I'll skip past the rest. Now that I'm no longer trapped in hell, I went and did a few things. Like talk to the average Twitter user here for some free shit. Tried to buy a perk from the shrine, but I'm poor. Bought some drugs from Mr. Drugman, then actually got to play the game, but not before hearing the most in-depth, intellectual conversation I've ever heard. Fantastic! After pressing buttons as fast as possible to win the game, I confront the Lone Shark in an epic battle for the- OH COME ON! Long cutscene short, Lone Shark doesn't know anything, Kuze set me up and wants me to help him get information from Kazuma about the empty lot, which Kiryu obviously turns down. The end, back to the gameplay. Kiryu then heads outside to call Nishiki to tell him about what happened and that they'll meet up at the Kazuma family office. Kiryu arrives at the office to hear a character named Kashiwagi giving the good suck. Oh yeah, he's also a somewhat important character. They establish the obvious of Kiryu was framed. Kiryu tells Kashiwagi and Nishiki everything. They talk about things that have already been talked about, and Kiryu states he's going to leave the Yakuza to take responsibility and to keep Kazuma from being cast out since he'll no longer be a part of the family, along with putting pressure on Kuze to hand over the killer once he's out. And he's going straight to Doji himself to do that. Kashiwagi also loudly kicks the table. I come out of the building to immediately see Sanic in the wild, sell off some valuables, buy a shirt I can't wear, and head to the Dojima HQ. Another cutscene of Kiryu and Nishiki reminiscing, but this time in Nishiki's car. They arrive and tell the gate boy that Kiryu's here to retire, gets beat up, and then finesses the shit out of Kuze. After actually having fun stomping on Kuze and friends, I stand and revel in my victory. As Kuze chops off his own penis. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, any amount of feedback is welcome and pretty encouraging, unless you hated the video that is. I plan on making more stuff like this in the future, and there's some obvious things I can improve on, like slurring my words when I talk too fast, but hey, it's all a learning process. And anyways, once again, thank you very much for watching.